are in Italy. In the northern region of Lombardy. We spent some days exploring Milan, which is also the gateway to Lake Como, the scenic and iconic lake area in northern Italy. We also spent time in nearby Bergamo. It's a favorite historic town of big and small, and it's right at the foothills of the Alps. It's awesome. So is our favorite little Italian watchdog. We had to visit cathedrals. <laughs> this is a Bergamo special, is it has polenta. Our adventure in Lombardy begins in Milan. This is big. And small travel. We're in... Milan. Italy. This is the home of one of the most magnificent cathedrals in the world. We're back in Italy. We explore Milan and took a train an hour north to Bergamo. Milan may be best known for fashion and as well industry. But it also has a lot of history. Leonardo da Vinci spent time here and helped design the city's mini canals. Our journey to Milan started in Lucca, in Tuscany. Lucca is located between Florence and Pisa. It's an adorable town, and if you go there, you need to bike or walk on the historic city wall. If you're in Tuscany, you can take a quick high-speed train from Florence to Milan in under two hours. We arrived at Milano Centrale Station. This is Milan's central train station. And we're in Milan, in the center. Our first stop. The oldest shopping mall in the world was constructed during the Italian unification. We are in Milano in the Galleria Vittorio Emanuel II. And this is the big magnificent mall. Milano is considered to be one of those Italian cities that doesn't get as much exposure. But in being here for only a short time, you can definitely see that it is perhaps the future of Italy, being one of the most successful economic and modern cities. But so far, so good. It's a very big city, something we didn't bank on. There's a mosaic on the floor that we noticed. And there's a tradition that they do there at the mall. Well, let's just say small found it. <laughs> What's going on? What are you, what are you doing? Apparently, if you roll around on your heel on the balls of the bull, <laughs> the toro, you need to spin on your heel three times counterclockwise. Uh, it's good luck. So that's why people are doing it. One lady was concerned about the divot it was forming on the floor. <laughs> so she just took a photo. But she's not going to have good luck, I guess. No. The architect of this mall, Giuseppe Mangioni, was considered one of the most innovative of the time. This mall design influenced all the malls in Europe going forward. But uh, we need coffee, so let's go get some coffee.
Right next to the mall and the Duomo, you'll find the statue of Leonardo da Vinci. He worked and lived in Milan for many years. He was essentially the cultural and arts ambassador of the city. This is also where he created his masterpiece, The Last Supper. You can still see it here, you just need to make reservations. The Milan Cathedral is the largest church in Italy. St. Peter's is bigger, but that's part of Vatican City. We are in the Duomo de Milano, and surprisingly, to see such a grandiose and look at this place, fantastic Duomo. It's only three euros to get in. Cathedral only, but still a really good price to see such a grand piece of architecture and design. The Milan Cathedral may have the most statues of any other building in the world. No one can quite agree how many exactly but many people think there's about 3,300 statues. The most recent stained glass window was made in 1988, more than 500 years after the oldest ones at the cathedral. So as you can see behind me, the stained glass here is pretty incredible and everything tells a story. It's kind of like a comic strip. <laughs> Maybe a little more serious. The heart of Milan's canals are in the Navigli neighborhood, which is also known for aperitivo. This is the definitive studenty, youthful place to get aperitivo in Milano. Aperitivo is typically enjoyed before dinner. All you have to do is buy a drink and there's typically a full buffet of usually pretty great food. Look at that buffet. All you can eat. Sometimes that's the dinner itself. We walked to the Sforza Castle, named after Francesco Sforza, the Duke of Milan. It's free to walk around. We just wandered through, as Milan is a very walkable city. And saw some cats. quite walkable. There's a metro, of course, which is very easy to use, but you can kind of go in and out of districts from the Duomo um, pretty easily by foot, and we like that a lot. One of the things we notice, we feel as if the center is definitely not very local. It's very hard just to get a bottle of water.
across from the Duomo is Rina Shente. It's a huge department store. On top, they have a cafe and a bunch of places to eat. As well, places to eat at Corso Como, which leads to the Porsche Nuovo District. This district has the tallest building in Italy, the Unicredit Tower, as well as other more modern structures. We are in obviously a very new part of Milan. You can find the name here. It's nice to be in a different part of Italy and Milan you definitely get a different flavor for sure. The thing we liked least about Milan, not many cafes. Actually something not too hard to find in Italy is coffee, but in Milan you have to search a little bit more. Remember you have to pay more to sit down and enjoy your coffee in Milan, but well worth it. This is really random, but if you're, if you have some time and you're walking around Corso Buenos Aires, go to a place called Coffee Prince and get the matcha cappuccino without sugar. Only two euros, very, very good. Bergamo is only an hour by train from Milan, and this was our next stop. This is big. And small travel. We're in. Bergamo. Italy. We are in Bergamo. This is by far one of the most walkable cities and we love that. It is very walkable here in Bergamo for sure. It's a medium sized town but you can get to the busy shopping area um, within like 10 minutes of the train station and from there about 15 minutes to Chita Alta. So it's a great town to explore especially if you only have a day or two. Yes and actually as we walk through the center of Bergamo. The thing that people like and love about Bergamo is the Chita Alta. The Chita Alta, that basically means high city. So it's the city on top. It's the old city that is walled from the Venetians. And you see it from Chita Bassa, which is the lower city where we are now. That's the newer part. The Venetian walls of Bergamo. They date from 1560. Built initially to protect the people of Bergamo from the Milanese, who never attacked. So I guess they were intimidating enough. This is Porta San Agostino, and it's another way to get into the lovely Chita Alta, which is essentially the historical center, UNESCO heritage site in Bergamo. Getting around Bergamo is pretty easy. If you don't want to take the funicular, or if you want to work out and stay fit, go up to the Chita Alta and walk it. There are steps that go directly there, safe, lit, let's do it. special. All I know about it, it is, is it has polenta, so I imagine it's some sort of polenta cake, but they like to put a bird on top. This is actually a really big bird. 
Put a bird on it. Put a bird on it. I don't know if that applies here in Italy. Decent cappuccino? Espresso's okay. Definitely 10 for 10 on ambiance. This is a great spot if you want a good aperitivo. We are yes. going to our favorite aperitivo here in Bergamo. It's only six euros if you get a glass of six wine. Six euros. And we will show you everything you get for that. It's one of our favorite things about this town. In USD, as of the time filming, six euro is? It's about six dollars and sixty cents. Aperitivo is a must. See. Tea. One of our favorites is a place called Tea Bakery. It may not sound like the place you'd go to get a drink, but... Makes me think of T-Bone Steak. Tea Bakery. It has... Actually, every night it seems to have a different... Every night except Monday, it's open. Well, the last time they had an amazing Brussels sprouts, but they don't have it this time. Which is a little disappointing. Wander around Chitabasa, you also get a lot of attractions, restaurants, shops. Well, hello there. We are in Bergamo and we are having a Piadina. This is not from Bergamo, but the guy who made it is from the original spot that the Piadina is from in Emilia Romana. And it's pretty good. After all that food and wine, this is necessary. Woo. You definitely get the sense that Bergamo has definitely its medieval, charming touches. Meanwhile, back in Chita Alta at the Bergamo Cathedral, the interior is quite amazing. From the outside, it may seem inconspicuous, but the interior shows off a lot of Baroque features, frescoes, and more. The cathedral dates from the 14th century. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed our adventures in Northern Italy. Please subscribe. And don't forget to click the bell to get all of our updates. Thank you very much. Grazie mille. Grazie. Ciao.